mana guidance to body of the soul ever been to Guidor in Donegal? I went there when I was 12. Big cross country race for the boys. We're all the back of the minibus head towards Derry one morning. And this is big time. This is like international athletics for us because we're racing against boys in the south. And we have this thing to do Belfast proud. Two of the boys are prods. The rest of us are Catholics. I suppose the good people in the south thought this is great stuff. Let's get this week team over from Belfast and all that pitching is in shape. Anyway, we're through the border. The boys are all singing pop tunes and all, but I'm just in the back of the bus looking out the window. We're going through the mountains. You know where Mount Aragon is and everything? It's a beautiful sight, Don. Donegal has to be the most beautiful place in Ireland, I reckon. Anyway. We arrive at Guidor, what a place, and it's happened with about 200 boys and they're getting into gear and they're membering up. The whole event's run by Christian Brothers, so they're clapping young fellas behind the ear, basically trying to maintain some order. Our team goes off for a wee jog. We're surrounded by fields of barley and we dip down into this wee valley where there's a woods and stream running through it. The woods and stream's out of bounds. So naturally, us Belfast boys have to go check it out. Woods and stream down, sure it's like an Amazon does. We come across these young fellas from Cork. There's a bit of banter about our accents. They could hardly talk, we couldn't understand a word they were saying. You get the idea that they're lording it over us a bit, you know, looking down on us. I sense it anyway. We run along. We come up with this idea to go down to the stream to check it out for fish. So we're down by the stream down. Little silver fish, but nothing substantial. Till one of the boys calls us further down. Laying in the water is a wee foal, four or five days old. He's all skin and bones, grey coat. He's got flakes of blood in his coat. He's cut himself up really badly on the sharp rocks. We're all just standing over him. You can see his back leg snapped. And he's breathing. He's alive, but just about. So this big conversation gets started up. Between all the boys, he suddenly reckon themselves the leaders. That deliberating is what we should do. And one says we should drop a rock on its head. I'm looking on their faces, and I'm seeing it there, they're scared stiff, not clueless. It's all bravado. And this fool on the floor, in real pain, and all this chit chat going on. Next thing the priest sees us, sees the fool, tells us not to move and that we're done for, that we're really done for. A group of boys will always get the blame for hurting a fool. A group of Belfast boys will get a hammering, for sure. So it's clear to me in an instant. And I'm down on my knees, and I take the fool's head into my hands, and I put it under water. He's thrashing around a bit at the start, so I press down harder until he's trying. Next thing, the priests arrive. He's grabbing me by the hair, dragging me through the woods, promising me a proper hiding. But I know I did the right thing by that wee fool. I could take the punishment for our boys. I had the respect of them other boys now, and I knew that. I'm clear of the reasons, Don. Clear of all the repercussions. But I will act. And I'll not stand by and do nothing. 